three evil customs have gradually gained foothold in our own Italy. The first of these is adulation and ceremony. The second is heresy. And the third is intemperance. This is Luigi Cornaro, sort of the original diet guru. The 16th century Italian merchant called overeating that evil. And the fact that it's so common a wicked thing. Cornaro said overeating was gluttony, a literal sin, and argued that eating less is not just better, but also more moral. Oh, wretched and unhappy Italy. Canst thou not see that intemperance kills every year amongst thy people as great a number as would perish during the time of a most dreadful pestilence, or by the sword or fire of many bloody wars? Clearly, he loved his diet, and he wrote essays about it, which were gathered into a book called The Art of Living Long. In many ways, this was the first major fad diet. Its success marks a key moment in our transformation from a culture focused on health to one that is obsessed with weight. Luigi first started thinking about his diet at the age of 40. He was sick and pretty unhappy. He had gout, all kinds of stomach issues, and what he describes as a continuous low fever. He says he tried almost everything possible to feel better. His doctors had one last idea. The prescription was to eat less. My physicians warned me, if I neglected to apply this remedy, in a short time it would be too late to derive any benefit from it. For in a few months I should certainly die. To be clear, this was a pretty radical approach to eating at the time. Rich people were eating and drinking large amounts of whatever they enjoyed. But Luigi is desperate, so he takes their advice. He starts eating just 12 ounces of food a day, an egg yolk, bread, a little meat, and some soup. He also has 14 ounces of wine. Hey, a man can't live on egg yolks alone. After a few days of eating less, Luigi is already feeling much better. In a year, he's a new man. He can get onto his horse without help and easily climbs a hill on foot. The art of living long, helped along by the relatively new printing press, becomes what some call the first best-selling diet book ever. And Luigi doesn't talk about his weight in the book, just his health. Joy and peace have fixed their abode in my heart and never depart from it. Luigi did live long, though there's some disagreement. Did he die at 98 or live to be as old as 104? Either way, pretty good. At one point, Luigi was eating just one egg yolk over the course of two days, which is obviously not enough food to live on. And although this may seem pretty out there, in other ways, it's actually a fairly modern dieting tactic. Restrict calories in an extreme way by cutting out whole food groups and eating very small portions. Lots of people do it today. His story is a model for pretty much every blockbuster diet that's ever existed. I have decided to point out in this brief treatise what a fatal abuse is the vice of intemperance. But what modern science has shown us is that weighing less doesn't necessarily make us healthier. That message has definitely gotten lost, and equating overeating to gluttony and sin has perhaps done more damage than good.